Okay, folks. Now, you saw me have him pick me up off the mounting block. And um, a lot of people evidently don't have one. So I'm sure everybody tailgates. That's what I see on TV. So just tailgate and have a little tailgate party with your horse. Now, what I want you to watch is how long it takes him to figure this out because uh, it's different. Okay. So I'm going to send him and then I'm going to ask him to join me. Now, a little trivia. Make sure you got some kind of popper on the end of your lead rope. Because it'll help you, especially when you're here. So here's direction, here's impulsion. I'll send him down country. Now I'm going to send him back the other way. This is him talking. I'm standing dead in front of him asking him to go that way. So I've given him direction and I just keep picking up the energy. Now I'm going to ask him to join me. I, I throw the tail of the rope away so he can't see it. It's not a threat anymore. So now I'll just bump and ask him to come up here and join me. Like everything else, you'll watch his expression change. And the, the beauty of the tailgate, obviously, is so that you have plenty of room to walk around and do what you want him to do. Now, he just quartered, so there's two ways to deal with it. I can make it uncomfortable until he steps the correct direction. Or I can send the tail of my rope and show him which way to go. There, he stepped over. Now, it's important that you get rid of the tail of your rope so he doesn't have to focus on anything other than what I'm asking of him. Now, this you can call this liberty training if you want, but what I call it is necessary in case I don't, I get hurt and I get up on top of a rock or a log or anything and I can get on my horse. He's going to get really good at this from both sides. And he'll get to where when I climb the fence, by the time I get the top rail, which nowadays takes a while, he'll be standing here. So you can see how hard I'm pulling on the lead rope. And this brings up the point about you kind of got to believe in what you're doing. You can't steal a ride. If you hang on to this thing here under their chin all their life, you're stealing a ride. You don't need to have control all the time. You have to have some trust. So that's kind of how it works, but the subject I wanted to approach today. Now here's separation. We're talking about the flag and the tarp. How do you know when they're brain dead? They're brain dead when they don't move off of the separation. I asked him to leave and picked up my energy and he made it. But what I really want to talk about today is fear. Now, a whole lot of people out there that are in the horse world have fear. They're afraid of getting hurt is the number one thing. And they're afraid of a horse not doing what they want, like crossing water. And what it amounts to is that you're already dead in the water, so to speak, before you start, if you have that fear. Okay, everybody has a certain level of fear. I don't have very much, but when Deb and I got together, she was scared of heights. If she rode on the side hill of a hill with her horse, she got real nervous and really scared. And one day I finally said, I need to know exactly why you're afraid. What do you think is going to happen? And she says, I don't know. I think the horse might fall down. Well, these horses are all pretty naturally catty. And what's happened over the years is she's kind of worked that out. And uh, it's kind of funny to me because one of the ways was she just got a mule. Well, her mule isn't even 12 hands, so she don't have a hell of a long way to go if it falls apart. Okay, she's 13 too, she is. But let me tell you how to deal with fear for those of you that have it. And I say how to deal with it. You have to deal with it. If you're going to own a horse... You can make all the excuses you want, but you've got to face it someday. And the way I suggest to do it is in real small increments. 
And for people that ride with other people, the number one thing you have to do is pick who you ride with. And make sure the person that you're riding with isn't more fearful than you are. The other thing is, is don't ride with dinks. I can tell you a hundred examples of somebody stopping to shut a gate on foot and everybody leaving them. And then they think it's funny. That's not a friend. That's a dink. Now you go to cross water and you need to take some time because you're scared. And your friends are so important, they got to get somewhere and they start giving you a hard time about the term. It's called cowboy up. Now I don't know where that term actually actually came from because the whole time I was on the ranch I never heard it used once and by the way I never heard anybody say what's it on one of the they put this stuff on barn boards and said don't sit on your spurs well that's profound anyway what my point is is that you got to be around the right kind of people and if people set you up to fail the, the trick is is don't go with those people don't set yourself up and your horse to fail it's not going to help your fear at all if somebody's yelling at you or getting bothered or doesn't have the patience to help and or wait for you. The other thing is I'm going to show you, and I don't know because beginners are, that are watching this and people that have been around it for a long time. If you want to get over fear and you get in a fearful situation, and one of the big things is if somebody else's horse throws a fit and dumps them and everybody screams or whatever they do, get off your horse. People tell you about cowboy up, ride it through. Well, they're the ones that you'll eventually see them at ICU. But what I'm telling you today is, as a guy that's been around this for a while and I've been teaching for a while and I've seen a lot of people quit the horse business because they got sick of the people and they couldn't get past their fear. So this goes for a horse that's scared and if you're scared it never gets better. Never. It gets worse. So you get off. Now you're going to lead your horse. Here's the key. People talk about horses that are chomping at the bit or they're dancing on their way home. I'm going to show you how to walk home with a horse that's bothered. You put that horse behind you, and you can swing your reins, and you never allow that horse's eye to go by your shoulder. That is the key. You start walking, and you walk about this speed. And that horse is behind you. Don't allow him to come through. Don't allow him to come past you. The horse will calm down, and believe it or not, because of you swinging the rope, you'll start to calm down. Now your feet are on the ground instead of your head. And it's real important to me that you understand that by getting off of your horse, it gives you time to make a decision. What happened? What went wrong? What was the last thing I remember? Oh yeah, Emily wanted to race home and didn't tell me. Or some other story. Okay, it also gives you time to reflect. Is this worth it? Is it worth fighting this whole thing over? Here's a famous line. I can't afford to get hurt. Well, I've never met anybody that can afford to get hurt. However, that comes out. So now you get time to think about it. And you look at your horse. And you think, well, hell, I'm feeding him. Might as well ride him. So... Then you get back on or else you go home. But you need to deal with fear. You can't just keep putting it behind you every episode so you have something to talk about at the barn. Those are not fun stories. Whenever I hear those stories, I walk away. So good luck. And what I can tell you is take it in small increments. Have a good horse and surround yourself by good people. Not I mentioned to you before about me climbing the fence. And by the time I get up where I need to be, he'll be there. This is how it starts. I'm climbing. As I put my foot on the first rung, I bump straight up like that. And that's going to be the cue. And he's going to learn to start squaring himself up.
to come get me. Because I'm going to do this probably 4,000 times and he will walk right up to the truck and be where I can scratch his withers because that's one of the places a horse can't reach. That's why we all do this. So I guess the word stay tuned is kind of the deal, but the point is I've, I've, I've made enough videos now where I'm turning the tables to what it originally should have been, but I've tried to show you a whole lot of things to work with your horses. Now it's time for you to look in the mirror, and fear is the number one first thing you got to look into. Have a nice day.